G'day viewers, how are you? Welcome to another weekend edition of TFU and my goodness, haven't I been having a fun week or two with trolls? Uh, it just, it is really, it never stops being strange to having people lash out at you, uh, arguing things that from a point of view of what they think words mean rather than what, or not even what they think they mean, but what they want them to mean. And the most obvious one I've been dealing with is free speech, which certain idiots just throw out like some sort of magical mantra. It's this real magical thinking going on. Like if I just say free speech, everything's okay. Despite the fact it is in practical terms, an almost meaningless phrase. Let's see, I've often, bring in the United States concept of free speech when you know the uh, amendment to the constitution that Congress shall not make a law limiting free speech which which means that the government is not supposed to prosecute you simply because you say or think things not that private companies have to give you a platform not that other people have to listen to your brain dead bullshit shouting someone down you know whether it's a platform like YouTube or Twitter banning someone because fuck that guy, uh, or you know someone like me blocking someone, uh, deleting comments, which I really enjoy doing because of how much it pisses off the people I do it to. You know that's just a choice. I don't want to listen. To you. you are free, uh, in my opinion, to have whatever fucking opinion you want. But when you start doing things in public, there are repercussions. From the mildest end of the spectrum, people decide you're a piece of fucking shit and want nothing to do with you, through to the extreme end of the spectrum where you get criminal sanctions. And again, like I said, people just throw out free speech like it's magic. I really would prefer to live in a world where fuckwits didn't use words or terms they don't understand, because free speech never does, never has, never will mean in any jurisdiction you can say or do whatever you want and there will never be any repercussions. Never means that. You know, this is the basic things. You can't slander people. Uh, you can't incite violence. And depending on how repressive the laws are in various countries, there will be other limits on speech that is acceptable. Notably, a lot of countries these days have hate speech laws. And uh, my other favourite is when I say in a video like, well, free speech is a fallacy. In the version that you're saying is a complete fallacy. Free speech doesn't mean freedom to say anything. It just doesn't. And they go, it's a human right. Which I assume is a reference to the UN Declaration of Universal Human Rights. Article 19 says, yes, you have the right to free expression. And they explain a little bit what that is. That declaration is just, you know, a feel good declaration of things that are awesome. That is as not binding on anyone. But the version that has influence on international laws, which is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 19 has an extra little paragraph that says there are also responsibilities when it comes to free right. And it's basically, don't use freedom of expression as your excuse to fuck people over. Uh, and this is where hate speech laws come in, but also stuff like libel and incitement to violence. And there's a whole catalogue of things. And it's all worded so vaguely that any shitty government can introduce any shitty law they want. So just throwing out the oh, free speech, human rights. You sound like a fucking idiot, quite honestly, because those terms, the way you use them, are fucking meaningless. And it's, 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 it's as if they just say certain words and phrases and terms that they don't know the meaning of because they think it makes them look smarter. They just throw out the big words because they think they're more photosynthesis if they do that. You know, it doesn't work. You look stupid when you do that. And another fun phrase that I've thrown at me because good old uh, Count Fuckula, who's... <laughs> Honestly, he has every right to have a go at me because I had a right at uh, had a go at him. But um, I, I just kind of thought I'd be beneath his notice. It was really weird to me when he got worked up about it. But anyway, so when I pointed out when you're, you know, on trial for hate crimes, hate speech, uh, inciting, you know, uh, hatred on people, uh, 
hanging out with Tommy Robinson, possibly the most notorious bigot in England, isn't doing a lot for your case. Doesn't make me believe that you made your Hitler dog video with no ill intent. Particularly when it's an established and published guideline of the alt-right and outright neo-Nazis to do shit and say they should never know when it's a joke. So when you get called out for your vile offensive shit, you just go, ha, ah, joke. The goal of these people is to normalize hate speech, okay? And they trick people into protecting and say, hey, you should be able to joke about anything. My personal view is, yes, you should. And then you should fucking take responsibility for it as well. Not like, it was just a joke, therefore I can't possibly be held responsible for it. No, you can be held responsible for your words. That is a law that exists everywhere in the fucking world. It's often implemented in bad ways, just for the slow kids. I will say again, I don't think Count Fuckhole should have been prosecuted, let alone fucking convicted for hate crime. I don't think what he did was that extreme. I just have no faith whatsoever in his professed intention. Not when you see him following the literal instructions of the extreme right to fucking normalize hate speech. And even if he was innocent of that, it's like there's two groups of people I see in there. The ones who are evil, arguing in bad faith, and absolute scum fucks, and their sole goal is to normalize hate speech. And then you get the people who've been duped by them, and they go, yeah, you should be able to say anything. And their actions is still pushing the world towards normalizing hate speech. Then you get to play that fun game for the whole family. Which are they? The actual hateful bigot who wants to normalize hate speech? Or the fucking idiot who's been sucked in by the fuckheads who want to normalize hate speech? By the way, that game finishes when someone hits the big red button that says, it doesn't fucking matter. If what you are doing is normalizing hate speech, you should take some fucking responsibility. And when I brought up that Cuntface was hanging out with Tommy Robinson, there were two responses. The first one was just the more common, oh, guilt by association, because they read somewhere, ooh, that's a logical fallacy. But you know what guilt by association, association actually is, kids? It's when you say, ah, I see that person standing with the Nazi, therefore he's definitely a Nazi. What I'm saying with shithead is when you are on trial for hate speech and you choose to associate with and be championed by the most prominent example of promoting hate speech in your country, I think it's pretty fucking fair to doubt your fucking intentions. Quite fucking honestly. And the second group was the, what's wrong with Tommy Robinson? What has Tommy Robinson ever done that's racist? Someone whose entire public persona is about bigotry and racism and people have the audacity to go, what's racist about Tommy Robinson? And expect you to waste time with them. Seriously, someone who puts that forward, well, to my mind, obviously one, they are, there's no doubt, you can't say that without being a vile, disgusting piece of shit bigot yourself and you're just trying to fucking derail the conversation. But second, trying to be taken seriously when saying that fucking stupid a statement? You're a flat earther, okay? It's the whole thing of, everyone's entitled to their opinion. Many people's opinions are completely fucking worthless and factually wrong. And when someone says, I'm entitled to say something that's completely wrong, say it all you want. The rest of the world is going to point out to you, you were actually objectively factually wrong. See, fucking, I'm not gonna waste time with flat earthers and I'm not going to waste time with people who say things that someone like Tommy Robinson isn't racist. We get that in Australia. Pauline Hanson keeps saying, oh, what have I ever done that's racist? Apart from everything. And she keeps getting fucking uh, attention in the media. Like she goes, oh, I'm sick of saying people saying I'm racist. Then maybe stop being racist. People will stop 
saying you're racist if you stop being racist. And, she goes, oh, and people keep saying I'm stupid. Well, you just are stupid, okay? If you have a problem with people calling you stupid, you're going to have a problem your whole life because I don't see you getting any smarter than you are now. Oh my God, just this week, the Commonwealth Games were on uh, in Australia on the Gold Coast. Uh, <laughs> something I have zero interest in. Uh, they had an opening ceremony. It's like they're like baby Olympics. You have to have been a former member of the British Empire to qualify to be in um, the Commonwealth Games. So I care even less about them than the Olympics, which I don't care. But anyway, they have an opening ceremony like the Olympics do. And apparently there was a strong uh, indigenous theme in the opening ceremony, which Pauline Hansen took exception to. Not racist, mind you, but she just doesn't want anything in Australia to centre on indigenous people because um, she doesn't like them. No, no, not that she doesn't like them. She's got nothing against them. She just goes out of her way to say any celebration of Australia's indigenous heritage is just not Australian. Which, pff, my, oh God, she repeats this ridiculous fucking line. Well, I was born in Australia, so... I'm indigenous. It's like, well, you were born a fuckwit, I think. I think that's what you were born, a fuckwit. You're not an indigenous Australian. You're a fuckwit Australian. It's like saying, an introduce, it's like saying well, uh, domestic cats are indigenous Australian animals because my cat was born here. You're a fucking idiot and why won't the media stop giving her attention? It does my fucking head in. But again, they're so close, particularly the conservative media here. There's this scare campaign going on. Uh, the opposition, major opposition party, the Labour Party, are theoretically progressive. Um, they try to run a scare campaign saying, you know that Bill Shorten, he's a radical lefty. He's actually going to put left-wing policies in if he gets in. As if that's going to scare off Labour Party. I don't get... Most people got dis enfranchised with Labour because they weren't left enough. If the Conservatives go, oh, if you vote Bill Shorten in, there'll be all these really left-wing policies. Everyone's going, oh, fucking finally. They're like, they can't read the room. And there's this one going around this week about the Greens, who I'm not a particular fan of, but the Conservative media have all been about the Greens and their radical left policies. And then they go and list a things of, which are really bad that the Greens say, and it's like, uh, increasing tax on the ultra-rich, maybe doing a cap on CEO salaries, um, don't have any government funding for private schools, cut the working week, uh, free tertiary education, free public transport, and they are saying, this is the dystopian horror of the Greens. How do they not get that the majority of Australia would be more than okay with the majority of those policies. I mean, one of the reasons I don't have a lot of time for the Greens is because they'll never be in power, so they'll never enact any policies, so they can say whatever way out shit they want. But literally, the idea of saying things like, well, who, that's radical left, wanting a more equal society, stopping the rich end of town from stealing everything they steal, and making things more equitable for people who are doing it tougher, what sort of horrible, dystopian, Mad Max future are we talking about in Australia? Uh, it really, it is telling that their version of a horrible future is one that is fairer. It absolutely does my head in that they can't come up with better arguments than that. It's it's super surreal. But you know, I want to round out with something just... I feel like it'd be too heavy. So something silly. And a couple people sent me this link. And when I got it more than once, I knew I had to talk about it. As well, you know, I think it was pretty funny. Some people might think it's absolutely unforgivable. Uh, in, in Perth, in Western Australia, there was a newly installed uh, digital information booth uh, near the city. One of the new precincts they'd opened up. It's like, whoa, it's cutting edge. Look, it's a touch screen. Tells you information. Someone has managed during peak hour in the evening to make this sign display Pornhub. Uh, now, all the reports are just that it was displaying the homepage, which uh, suggests you couldn't actually play any videos by touching the touch screen. But hey, anyone who's seen... Uh, the front page of Pornhub, 
uh, knows that even without playing videos, you are going to get a lot of hardcore images. Apparently it stayed up for a while and uh, it got switched off when the authorities were alerted. Apparently there were a lot of social media posts going, ah, well, the things you see when you're walking around in Perth. And <laughs> they're going, oh, we, we're going to do a thorough investigation. We take this seriously. We've got to see if this was hacked. Yeah, in, you know what's not a hack? I'm going to go with the password for getting access to this thing was password. Stupid does not equal hack. Stupid equals you are part of the reason this world's totally fucked up. <laughs>